if you look at comparing us to, as an example, China, we're going way up, and China's been hurt over the last number of months, and they've, they're having a hard time, and they'll be fine, and uh, let's see what happens, but we have a chance to make a fair deal because China's been hurting us, and trade deals have been hurting us, uh, and we're changing them. Well, the trade showdown continues. That was President Trump yesterday on the escalating tensions with China. Joining us right now is Mario Cordero. He is the executive director of the Port of Long Beach, California. This is the second busiest seaport in the United States. The port handles trade valued at more than $194 billion a year. Mario, thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Good to Thank see you. you. So this ongoing trade dispute obviously has had a big impact. How is it impacting the Port of Long Beach? Well, at this point, there has not been a significant impact. However, uh, I'm a little bit more concerned about what those impacts are going to be, particularly as we go into the new year. And what will it be? Well, it could be because of the $200 billion that we're seeing now that has come in addition to the 50. We're talking about an impact of 25 to 28 percent. What does that mean? 28 percent of your cargo is going to go up in price? What's Correct. the impact specifically? Correct. Specifically, it's going to be higher costs, for sure higher costs to the consumer, and also a reduction in cargo. Now, some of these uh, Chinese products subject to tariff, uh, there would be substitutes from other places in the world. If, if U.S. buyers decide instead of buying from China, I'm going to buy from somewhere else, maybe somewhere else in Asia, we see some manufacturing possibly moving. Does that really change for you, or is it just uh, the same amount of uh, cargo coming just from a different port somewhere in Asia? Well, good question. For the Port of Long Beach, in terms of the cargo that comes from Asia, we will continue to be the port of choice for the Asia cargo, which is a Trans-Pacific route. So I think uh, in that regard, you know, we're not looking too much of a negative impact long term. But in terms, again, as to cost, I'm a little bit concerned with regard to the impact as to the Chinese-related car. Ma Mario, if you look at a country-by-country country breakdown of the countries that are sending cargo into Long Beach, what percentage is China versus? 69 percent. 69 percent. And And what's your lead time? How, I mean, how far out do you have visibility? Do you know now, right now, what the uh, volume is going to look like in the fourth quarter, for example? Well, right now quarter. we're very optimistic. In fact, we've had some uh, breaking record-breaking years for 2017. 7.5 million car, uh, containers have been moved. Uh, in terms of uh, fiscal year 2018, uh, that's our best fiscal year record: 8 million TEUs containers, wow. uh, which is a 10.7 percent jump from 2017. So for the year 2018, we're, we're very optimistic that we're going to continue to have a breaking year. So, what, so what's the answer here? I mean, you know, I know that the China tariffs have been an issue, and you're expecting them to, or you're expecting them to be an issue in the next quarter. But how do you deal with China that they're continuing to steal from America? We just had Steve Ballmer on the program. Listen to what he just told us. Ninety percent of companies in China use the Microsoft operating system, but like one percent pay. Certainly, uh, as I is, left is that, a few years ago, that, that right was stat? right. That was exactly. 90% uh, of companies are using the Microsoft operating platform, and only 1% are paying for it. H how do we, I mean, what are we going to do that China keeps stealing everything this way? I mean, that's pretty extraordinary. I'm a free trader by, by nature. I went to school, economics, it's the best thing for the world. Uh, this one's a tricky issue because it is absolutely clear that the rules don't apply in China. And the U.S. government needs to do something, whether tariffs are right or wrong. I, I'm silent on that point, but the U, without any pressure from the U.S. government, we're not. We're talking about ten billion dollars plus, for example, in Microsoft that would go into profit. Ten billion dollars in theft from China, just from one company, for one company. Right. Well, I think uh, again, I think there's some legitimate issues that the administration is concerned about. These have been issues that have been longstanding. Uh, I think the only question that uh, will be answered is whether or not the tariff trade war is the answer to that. So we shall see. Do you do you see a problem with Chinese business practices in your end of it? I mean, when stuff is uh, we're talking about goods, obviously not software. When it comes over from China, is is there a, are there issues that you don't have importing from other countries? No. I mean, uh, for, for us, again, uh, Southern California, we're the largest complex, port complex in the United States. So for us, it's cargo coming from Asia, the Trans-Pacific trade route, uh, and whether it's China or anywhere else, that's going to be continued the, mm -hmm. the more important trade route for this country. And did you just say 69 percent yeah. of the volume is just from China? 69 percent of our imports are just from China. 39 percent of our exports 
go to China. Can you, can you get down? those from somewhere else? Yeah. Can you get those goods from anywhere else? Well, you know, in terms of our three main trade partners, we have China, we have Vietnam, and we have South Korea. So Asia, Southeast Asia will continue to be the market for us. Uh, as we go forward, whether it's China or anyone else. Mm -hmm. Because China has been losing market share in a lot of different product categories to Vietnam and Thailand and other countries in the area. So has there, is that 69% going down? Well, I think uh, that's a good question. Uh, with regard to this dynamic of manufacturing in China, what we have seen, and this is prior to the trade war, is again, the U.S. manufacturing moving to Asia, whether it's China, there's now more movement towards Vietnam. And uh, in the future, again, we're looking to Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Really interesting stuff. Mario, thank you very much. No, thank you so much. For yeah, I hope you'll come back soon. We no, absolutely. Uh, great insights from you. Mario Cordero joining us there.